Hey everyone, welcome to another Ruby video. I have a question for you guys. How many of you knew that uh, Ruby has a manga? I just found this out looking through uh, Amazon suggestions and this popped up. Uh, volume 1 released a few months ago and ended up purchasing it and I gotta say, it's, it's really good. So for the next few weeks what I wanted to do is go through and uh, look at a few of the chapters or go through all of the chapters that are present in this manga. Uh, for today, I wanted to go through the first eight chapters, actually. There's 11 in total, and the first eight chapters actually chronicle the uh, red, white, black, and yellow trailers that we saw in the anime, with some differences. Now, this manga is not actually written by anyone at Rooster Teeth. It's written by a guy named Shiro Miwa, and it's quoted by Rooster Teeth as saying, this manga is canon until it's not, or rather, it's not non-canon, so that... It is canon as long as it doesn't conflict with what the show tells you. So the show is the prime source for Ruby material and then the manga can give additional information. So the manga starts off, of course, with the red trailer and it gives, as most manga does, a few pages of full art. And I gotta say, for the Ruby, uh, for the red trailer, having some full art images, it's, it, they're honestly, it's incredibly Done. The art style is really, really nice, and it's really nice to see all these characters in a slightly different art style, in a manga-style setting, and it's just really nice. Now, for the red trailer, at least, there's only a couple pages that go over the red trailer, and then we kind of see a little bit more of the girls interacting back at Beacon, because this story takes place while the girls are still at Beacon. So we see uh, the girls after the little fighting scene that happens in the red trailer, we see the girls back at Beacon in the cafeteria, and they're discussing what exactly Dust is. So of course Weiss goes off on her little uh, Schnee Company rant, discussing, quoting exactly what Dust is in the Schnee Company pamphlets, and then we see Jean getting tripped by Cardin. And we saw this in the anime, Cardin was picking on Jean, and it led to a fight between uh, Jean and Cardin. But with Cardin being there picking on Jean, he actually turns his attention to Team Ruby and starts picking on them, calling them Ozpin's favorites, things like that. Uh, Ruby a little grade skipper, and with that happening, Glinda Goodwitch comes along and sees this little conflict and thinks of it as a good idea for training. So we actually get to see a practice match between Cardin and Ruby, which is a lot different than the anime because it was between Cardin and Jean. Whether I would consider this canon, I don't know. Because in this fight with Cardin and Ruby, of course, we can guess at what the end result is, but Ruby, being Ruby, she's, you know, generally uh, intimidated, or not really intimidated, but just a little bit scared or nervous in front of crowds, and she just starts overanalyzing Cardin's weapon and what it could possibly do, and things like that, and she's just freaking out on the stage. But upon Weiss calling out to her and her team calling out to her, you're our leader now, you know, things of that sort, it brings her back, why she's at Beacon, why she wanted to become a Huntress, why she's there swinging Crescent Rose. And of course, she ends up kicking Cardin's ass, and then, you know, that settles that. And as to why I would not consider this really canon is because if Ruby kicked Cardin's ass uh, at Beacon, then, you know, there wouldn't really be much of a point for Jean scaring the crap out of him by taking out that Ursa that Cardin pissed himself running away from. So, I don't know. Whether Jean made Cardin piss his pants or Ruby made Cardin piss his pants, both, I think, would make Cardin leave the entire group of them alone. So I'd rather most likely guess that the Jean one is, of course, the canon one, because it's from the show, so I don't know how canon this fight would be. The next trailer we actually get to see is, of course, the white one. They're going in order, uh, in the order of Ruby, red, white, black, yellow. And with Weiss's trailer, we actually get to see both sides of it. We get to see her fight with the knight, and then we get to see her little concert recital at the end. And while the white trailer was going on in the anime, or in the show, it was happening simultaneously. As she was singing, she was also fighting the knight. And we didn't really get much of a background as to why she was fighting this knight. Where did this knight come from? And things like that. That's actually, that knight is actually from a training facility in the Schnee company. And you can see Weiss is talking with one of her father's assistants who's helping her train. 
helping her train and is asking her, you know, why don't you just come to Atlas? Atlas is much closer where your father can keep a watchful eye on you. Weiss, of course, retorts to this by saying, you just want me to screw up and not not screw up and not sully the uh, Schnee family name. I want to go to Beacon so I can get the heck away from here. And, you know, she goes on not really talking very nice to her father's assistant, calling him a puppet and things like that. Of course, he gets annoyed and releases the giant knight. Weiss actually recognizes the armor as something that was kept in one of the great halls as an antique, but this one is a replica that is much stronger than the original armor and is actually, we find a description of this, it is a possession type Grimm, actually an amalgamation that the Sh of smaller Grimm that the Schnee company created. And this is one, as Weiss easily is able to deduce, she is not supposed to be able to defeat. This is one that her father put up there just says, prove your strength and you can go to Beacon. So, of course, she's supposed to prove her strength against this knight, something that she's not supposed to be able to beat, and so she'd end up staying at Atlas. But Weiss, through hard-fought victory and knowing how to use her glyphs, how to use dust, and how to use the complicated weapon that she has, is able to deal with the knight, go to a recital, and... Um, you know, go on with, as we've seen with the uh, white trailer on that. But we also find out at the beginning uh, of the little chapter that Weiss, as growing up, we saw a little bit of this in the show as well. Weiss had always expected everything growing up, all the praise to be better than everyone else. She was expected to be better, so she expected to be better and get all the accolades that came with that. And... Um, the assistant had even mentioned that, you know, your father did mention once that he enjoyed your singing. You know, great father there, only mentioning at one time that he enjoyed his daughter's singing. You know, we all know that he's an asshole, but this just kind of drills it in even just that little bit more. And at the end, when she's going to that recital, the assistant remarks that I'm surprised that you decided to do this charity event. And Weiss said, you know, once I've made up my mind to do something, you know I do it. Referencing, you know, defeating the knight. She had made up her mind to do that, and she did it. And she also remarks at the end, if my father really likes my singing, I'm sure he's listening out there somewhere. Whether he was actually listening is left a mystery. Granted that she just defeated that knight and is leaving home and everything, he's probably not too happy with her, so I don't know if he actually would want to support her that much at the time, because again, we've seen in the show, he's not the biggest fan of hers at the moment. Granted, this is before now, but still, he didn't approve of her decision the entire time she decided to go to Beacon. Next, we see Blake's trailer, which is chapters 5 and 6, and then Yang's trailer is chapters 7 and 8. And with them, there's not much that actually changes with those chapters. At Blake's, however, we do get to see uh, Adam Taros again. They're fighting on the train to take the sh train from the Schnee Dust Company, and although nothing much has changed with the trailer and it takes up most of those two chapters, we do see a little thing at the end where uh, Blake, the, all the girls are waking up in the morning in their dorm room, and, you know, they're going on commenting about Bedhead, and of course, you know, Blake with her cute little kitty ears, um, everyone's commenting how cute they are in the morning, uh, you know, uh, Weiss is saying, my hair's always a mess too, Yang as well, and of course, Ruby, our heroic heroine, I know that's a little bit redundant, but still, is just passed out in bed, um, still, you know, being the Ruby that we know and love, before all the traumatic events that happen at the fall of Beacon. The last two chapters are, uh, of course, Yang's little prologue, and those are essentially left the same. The only difference, however, is that Ruby, instead of meeting Yang as she's walking out of the bar, meets her inside the bar, walks in and sees the destruction of the entire bar, not just, oh, Yang, what are you doing here at the bar? No, like, Yang, what are you doing here in this bar that's completely destroyed? And Junior just says, oh, don't worry about it, her and I were just having a talk, and everything, and then they order uh, two strawberry sunrises with no alcohol, of course, because Ruby's underage. But other than that, that's pretty much the summation of the first eight chapters of the manga. The last three chapters are actually a little side story involving Roman Torchwick, my favorite villain in the entire Ruby series, who, you know, 
can can still be alive, right? I know he's confirmed dead, and I know he got eaten whole, but he was he was eaten whole. He could have busted out of the grim stomach, right? There's still hope for him, right? You know, N Neo's out there somewhere. Neo Neo could have rescued him. I why can't he be alive, please? Uh, I know, I know, it's a pipe dream, but let me have this. So. It's going to be a little side story involving uh, Torchwick, and we actually, little part I forgot to mention, at the end of Ruby's little trailer, there's uh, one page that shows uh, Torchwick in the shadows just saying, you know, uh, I can't wait till our next encounter, Little Red, of course, as he called her before. And I haven't actually read the last three chapters. I wanted to make this video before reading the last couple of them so that I could uh, give an honest experience this weekend when I post the next video, the second part of um, this manga. And at that point, I'll decide whether to do specific chapter reviews of them and break it down uh, page by page or go through and just do it all as one little story arc. But uh, anyways, let me know what you think. Let me know if you guys even knew that there was a manga or anything for this series. And, uh, you know, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.